<laughs> we're going to get going. Uh, we're going to get started here. So uh, thank you all for checking out our final webinar of 2021. I'm um, going to have some uh, changes to these coming next year. We're going to uh, be doing a lot of different things next year just with the content that we're putting out. But uh, we'll, I will, you'll get that announcement uh, in January when we uh, throw out the next one. But uh, we're wrapping up this year with uh, a topic that is that is really important, I think, for not just marketing related, but just business in general. And, and it's all about understanding the most important metrics for your firm. And obviously, we're going to focus on marketing metrics today, but I think just in general, um, understanding your data is just a really important aspect of, of running your firm. And, you know, uh, just knowing what your numbers are, KPIs for your team, um, revenue metrics, uh, all kinds of stuff, you know, it, it is really, really important um, for just understanding, you know, how you're setting your goals, whether you're achieving your goals, all that kind of stuff. And so um, one thing that we have realized, though, as a marketing company is that there are a lot of metrics out there that are a waste of your time. Um, a lot of marketing companies, and we'll get into this, um, are pretty deceitful when it comes to how they're presenting metrics to you, what metrics they're telling you matter. So we're going to expose that today. We're going to tell you um, what you should be focusing on instead. And um, yeah, so I think with that, let's uh, jump into it real quick. So if you've been following us, we got new pictures. We've Woo! Been We've had the same pictures for two years, uh, but we got we got new ones now. Um, but yeah, so uh, I am I am John Henson. I'm the editorial director here at Spotlight Branding, which is uh, just a fancy word for I do all of the these sorts of things. I do the webinars <laughs> and the podcasts and I the videos and blogs and stuff. He does all the content, and I'm Jana. Um, and I, when I'm not lounging around, I am talking to people like you who are interested in what we do, um, answering all your questions, and helping see if it might be a good fit for us to help out with some of this stuff. So that that's us with our great new pictures. I love it. Yes. Oh, about time. <laughs> yes. So as always, before we jump in, uh, I do invite you guys to check out uh, the podcast that we have, uh, Law Firm Marketing Minute and Center Stage. Uh, Law Firm Marketing Minutes every Monday. Short episodes, uh, usually about 10 minutes long. We're coming up on episode number 400. Um, I may, I, it may be delayed. I may take the, the holidays off of recording, but I think next, I think Monday will be episode 399. So I may do I may do a big episode 400 like to start 2022, but we'll see. Anyway, uh, Center Stage uh, we started Center Stage this year. We uh, episode number 50 went live today, um, and just interviews with other attorneys, uh, other industry experts, uh, just talking about marketing challenges, business development challenges, um, you know, and, and obstacles that I know all of you face uh, from time to time. And so uh, just getting that advice and expertise and insight uh, is always just really valuable. And so with that, Jana, why are metrics so important? Metrics are huge because kind of like it says here, it's so crucial to know what is working with your marketing um, and more importantly, what is not working with your marketing, because in order to allocate what I know is a limited marketing budget, you need to be aware of what's producing and what is not. So having um, at least a solid grasp on those is really, really important. And it's, um, you know, a lot of people I talk to, they have a, at least a ballpark idea. You know, referrals is a huge one. So a lot will say, well, you know, I get, I get a lot from referrals. But what about all the other stuff that you're doing? And I'm not excluding spotlight branding in that at all. Like, I think that it's important to be aware of the return that all of your different marketing efforts are producing. And so... As you can see there, A-B testing is a huge way to, you know, see if it's something that has to do with the channel, kind of the, the marketing avenue that you've chosen, or if it's just maybe a wording tweak. So something that we do all of the time is A-B test. Um, I think at any point in time, there's at least a couple happening and some common ones are things like email subject lines. You know, half the people may get um, one with this subject line, the other half get this one. We can check then the, the rates for those. Um, we've A-B tested landing pages. That's a big one. Um, so whenever people are checking out different pages of our website um, from different things, seeing which one's more, you know, which one works better, honestly. Yeah. Um, so 
always share, you may even know of more, John, that we're testing, but always, you know, looking at different things. Oh, the presentation type thing. Yeah. So, some of y'all who I may have talked to before might have seen a whole elaborate presentation that felt a little excessive. And some of y'all, it may have just have been a whole conversation of just, just let's chat. Um, so always testing out things. Yeah. And I, you know, you, you mentioned us, I mean, I can tell you what we do. I mean, we have humongous spreadsheets that track, you know, what the, what the marketing campaign was, how many leads we got from it, how much we spent on it, what the cost per lead was. Um, if someone became a client of ours through that, you know, what the overall cost of acquisition for that client was, you know, for that lead source. So, and, and that, that helps inform us based on, you know, what things we're going to do first. So like, for example, you know, um, we've done advertising with above the law before, um, didn't work out. You know, we spent a few thousand dollars for some ads, uh, got a handful of leads, but didn't really get a huge return on it. On the other hand, um, you know, we have a lot of people that have found us through Lawyerist because of some of the marketing efforts that we've done. Lawyerist has been a great marketing uh, campaign for us. You know, really low cost per lead, uh, decent cost per acquisition, cost of acquisition. And so, you know, things like that, you know, and we wouldn't know that we, you know, unless we were tracking that data. So the thing to be careful of, and I, you know, if some of you are astute, uh, you'll get this picture. Um, but there are a lot of vanity metrics. All right. So what does that mean? It's, you know, it's these data points that a lot of marketing companies are going to dazzle you with. They're going to give you a bunch of colorful charts and graphs, a bunch of numbers, you know, big numbers that, you know, they're going to be like, man, look at all this great stuff we're doing for you. Your marketing is killing it. You're, you're doing a really good job. But the problem with that is that it's not really telling you the entire story of what your marketing is doing. Uh, instead, it really just serves to make you feel good about yourself and your marketing. That's why we call it vanity <laughs> metrics. Jana, do you know who this person is on the screen? No, no, could not, could not tell you who, who that is. I think she's a lovely looking lady though. Okay. Does the, does the name Carly Simon mean anything to you? No, it's but fine. You're in I have It's fine. Yes. Yeah. I, I'm true millennial, but yeah. I, ha I have a guess maybe yeah. just based on the headline. Yes. We'll see if I'm right. What is your guess? Um, the, you're so vain. Like yes. you, you probably think Simon, this song is yeah. about you. Is that yes. her? Yes. So yeah, Carly Crush Simon it. is wow. the one who sang this song. Um, and so, yeah, that, that was my fun little Easter egg. Hopefully. Aww. Um, elder millennials and Gen Xers, maybe some baby boomers on here would, would appreciate that. I don't know. I'm trying. Graphics are hard. Sometimes. Let us know in the comments if that was yeah. terrible. Yes. If you got it, I don't know. Who knows? Anyway, but yeah, so, you know, and it's really easy to, you know, have these calls with your marketing company. They say, man, we got you. Uh, you had 1500 website visitors uh, over the past 30 days. You, uh, you know, your email open rate was 70%, which if you got a 70% email open rate, then you either have a very small list or you have an amazing email, but you know, all this kind of stuff, uh, you know, it being thrown at you. And a lot of times it does not tell you the entire story of your marketing. So Jana, what are some examples of these vanity metrics? Ah, well, Thank you for showing the slide there. That helps me out a lot. But, you know, some of these vanity metrics. So website traffic, that's a big one. I'll a lot of times get questions about, oh, you know, expected traffic and website visitors. And um, while, you know, it, it sure sounds cool to have 10,000 hits on your website, are any of those people actually turning into clients is my first question. And how many of those are just immediately backing out because they were there and maybe even through some efforts that you're paying for like cost per click um, efforts and they're immediately gone and they're not even close to a client or a potential client of yours and so it's cool to you know have those numbers and say wow my website had so many visitors but is it converting is it actually paying off so that's one um your email open rate so like john said honestly if you're getting that 70 percent open rate i am let's let's chat because i would love to know what your secrets are with yeah. that subject line um but it can be deceiving because I personally, I'm the type that I 
have to open all my emails. So even if I immediately archive it and delete it, it's getting opened. Um, even if it's just from like the mass open, um, yeah. it counts. And so yeah. it can be a little bit deceiving there. Um, but also someone who opens it may not read it in its entirety. Um, they may just be doing what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, and, and I'll jump in real quick yeah, here. Um, please. Yeah. To your point, like if you, if you like, you know, if you, if you're in your email inbox and you check all of your emails and then mark them all as red, um, most email providers are going to count that as an open for your open rate um, in MailChimp, Constant Contact, whatever you're using. Um, but in terms of open rate in general, I, just as a quick note here, legal industry, you're looking anywhere from 10 to 20% for a standard open rate. Uh, that's kind of where ours hovers just on our end, our clients, um, a little bit on the higher end of that from what I've seen, but you know, just for your reference, if you're curious, that's kind of what you should be looking at. No, that's, that's great data. And um, it, you know, it can be, that seems low, but, and so that might seem discouraging, but even if people are not opening your emails, they're still seeing a subject line, which in what, with what we do, we keep it pertinent to, you know, what we offer, same with our clients. And they're also seeing yeah. who it's from. So even without that open, you're getting that little touch point and that little reminder. Um, and then social media, bless the, the likes and the comments, um, shares, all of those, um, they seem cool to other people. It may be like, oh, wow, people are engaging and they're liking. Are any of those people actually reaching out to you? Are any of those people actually signing up for a consultation? Are they, you know, working with you? Um, so we really love the idea of just making sure that you are being a part of that equation on social media. You're part of the timelines and the feeds that people are already on. That's what's important. Not necessarily if they take the time to go and comment and say, wow, great post or wow, beautiful picture as long as they're seeing it and getting that touch point, that's what matters. Yeah. And also, you know, especially with the legal industry, because like I know marketing companies in general, you know, they, they talk about how social media can be a big lead generator for your business. And that's true for some industries legal. It's just not the case. You know, a lot of times legal, you're sharing a lot of very sensitive and, and, you know, sometimes very private or potentially embarrassing, uh, content or you know situations that could be like that for people and people are not going to openly engage with that they can get a lot of valuable information from them. they can click on the articles and read it and educate themselves but they're not going to be you know you know they're not going to comment on a family lawyer's post you know be like heck yeah that's i'd love to get a divorce they're not going to broadcast that on social media and so that's that's one thing to keep in mind and so we'll talk about um right after jana talks about followers here uh, but we'll talk about what that should look like instead. That's a great point. Whenever I, you know, we talked about this a few webinars ago, got my speeding ticket. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I wasn't going on and sharing the posts for my attorneys like Facebook and saying, guess what, guys, I got in trouble because I was breaking the law a little bit. Um, let right. me tell you about it. So, you know, you make a great point. And then when it does come to followers, um, you know, having a huge, massive following, you know, is, is cool to say in this day and age going viral and having, you know, so many people that are following you it sounds so cool. But people aren't seeing all that content, you know, whether you have five or you have 5,000 followers, um, the way that the social media algorithms work, people, all those followers are not seeing every post that you make. They're not seeing every other post probably. So, you know, having some frequency with that and making sure that it's still getting in front of, you know, people as best as it can is important, but just having that number doesn't necessarily mean all those people are seeing your stuff consistently, if at all, really. Yeah. And, you know, that doesn't mean that social media doesn't have value and that you shouldn't post there. You should absolutely post there because, you know, people will check out your feeds when they're, you know, doing their research on your firm. They're seeing how active you are. Um, but then you also should, like Jana said, account for the content that people do see. You know, they, you know, your followers will all see something over a period of time. They just may not see everything. So to all of that point, those are some vanity metrics. It's not really stuff that, you should put a ton of weight on. It's good data to know, but it's not telling you the whole story. What does tell you more of the story? So your website traffic sources, all right? Where are people coming from? Where are people arriving to your website from? And then Jana, I know you get this uh, a lot when you ask how people found your firm. I do. Yeah. So, um, you know, one, one thing I really love to, you know, hit on whenever I'm talking to somebody is, you know, do you have an idea of where your clients are coming from? Um, and a lot of times website seems to be just a popular kind of 
place or they, they found me through my website and I'm like okay like that makes sense to me I've contacted you from your website but even internally with spotlight branding whenever it comes to measuring where someone's coming to us from if it is you know by default one of the resources that we have on our website or like our website chat we know inherently that's not the true place they came from either they googled spotlight branding they you know were referred to us by somebody they clicked from some other you know channel like lawyerist like above the law like you know any other site where we may have a presence and they got there that way so very very rarely does someone just happen upon you um they had to do something first they had to google something they had to be somewhere else in order to get to where your site is and so having you know that is just the default of oh they found me through my website isn't necessarily telling any of the story really it's a small yeah. piece of the story <laughs> yeah so the other one is social media reach so this is if you're if you're tracking social media uh, metrics and you really want to find out you know, the, the power that your social media content has, the reach um, and or impressions. I didn't put that on the slide, but impressions also, um, you know, uh, tells more of a story. It, that tells you how many people saw your post or, you know, how many timelines it showed up on. And so, you know, I know Facebook does this, um, Instagram, the way their algorithms work. Twitter also has a similar algorithm where, uh, especially for businesses, Facebook, I know, restricts and, and really limits how many people see a business's post. Um, Twitter, Instagram, theirs is based more on, you know, how much you are kind of interacting with other, like they'll, they'll try to guess like which content you would prefer to see anyway. I don't particularly like it. I tend to make it more chronological. Um, but reach is very important. So the way you can kind of extend your reach, you can boost your Facebook posts, um, you know, obviously, and then otherwise, you know, using hashtags to, to, you know, increase your impressions and stuff like that. But the reach is, is what's going to be more important because that's telling you exactly how many people saw your content. And so like Jana said, you know, even if you have 500 people who like your Facebook page, Facebook's not going to show every post to all 500 people. Um, so you boost your post, you know, a dollar a post is, is really all you got to do to extend that reach. And then beyond that, you can kind of play with audiences and begin to reach people who are not yet even connected with your firm. So focusing on reach there can really give you a, a, a bigger, a clearer picture of your social media uh, story. And then the last one is, uh, your unsubscribe rate on your emails, you know, um, generally, you know, you're all, you should always expect somebody to unsubscribe with every email you send out. That's totally okay. All right. It's not going to be the end of the world. Uh, if you have, you know, 25, 50% of your list unsubscribing with every single email, that's, that's probably a problem. And you should probably reevaluate what you're doing there. <laughs> but, you know, I can tell you for, from personal experience, you know, spotlight branding, you know, our email list, I, I mean, it's up to like 12,000 people at this point. Um, every single email we send out, we send out, you know, three or four a week, I think. Um, are there. I'll get them. <laughs> yeah, sometimes more than that. Um, I will have anywhere from 10 to 20 people unsubscribe from every email and that's okay. Right. Especially compared to, you know, the 12,000 people that are still around. Um, if you have not sent any emails before, or it's been a long time since you have, and you've added a bunch of people to your list, it is very likely that you will have a higher number of unsubscribes with the first couple of emails that you send out that number will absolutely level off. So that's fine. But that, you know, the, the unsubscribe rate really tells you more uh, and, and really click rates as well. You know, how many people are clicking the links in your email? I didn't add that one, but um, those two will generally tell you a better story of how your emails are performing. Right. Mm -hmm. So what, you know, and, and Janet, you can kind of finish this one up here, you know, in general, though, you want your metrics to tell you what's directly contributing to your growth. Mm -hmm. Yes. And a lot of times, as you can see here, they are difficult for any sort of outsource outside vendor to track, um, you know, with consistency and with accuracy. So one thing that we really rely on a lot of our clients to, you know, look at are these sorts of metrics here, which are the number of referrals that you're getting. We have tools to help you track those to, to you know, um, you know, even facilitate more of those. But, you know, for us to know every time a lead comes in, okay, this this was a referral, it's tough for us to do. We kind of, we have to rely on you guys to, you know, let us know those sorts of things. Quality, oh, the quality of leads. Um, 
that one is, it can be very subjective, but again, it's something that's, you know, not easy for us to track when we're not there seeing all the people coming in to say, oh, this is definitely a qualified person. Um, or this is someone who I get the like term tire kickers a good amount of times. Um, and so again, something that we need you guys to help us out with and kind of be tracking on your own. Um, yeah. and, and then the and case, real quick, yeah, yeah, real please. quick before you jump to that last one, you know, the, the leads is, is one of the biggest ones that marketing companies will throw at you. And it's like, yeah, we'll get you 100 leads every month. And they may do that, but their definition of a lead oftentimes isn't what your definition of a lead is. And so when you're working with a marketing company, you have to get on the same page with that because, you know, a marketing company can say, hey, we sent you 100 leads this month. Well, yeah, but like 97 of them were like, either not actually interested in working with us or they had a legal issue that we don't even handle. We're a family law firm and we were getting traffic ticket uh, requests and we don't handle that. And so, it, you know, make sure that, you know, if you're, if you're focused on leads, make sure that they are actual qualified leads that are appropriate for working with you. I think that's a great point. And like, if, if you are, you know, assured a certain number of leads, I would find out specifically, like you said, make sure you're on the same page about what that means. Is that just strictly an email address? Cause I can go and Google that and find that, but is it a yeah. lead? No. So make sure you're on the same page about that. Um, and then with the client and case value. So case value, a lot of times this can be aided by raising your rates, which is something that we can't, we can't do for you. You're, you're probably, you're not going to work with us and we're going to say, Hey, it's time for you to bump this up, this hourly rate from this to this. We're not going to say that, but what we're going to do is, you know, establish this online presence that justifies you being able to do that. You know, you have this authority and you're sought out um, by potential clients instead of having to, you know, cross your fingers and wait for people to, um, you know, kind of trickle in or you reach out. So that's, you know, kind of tied in a little bit with the client value, which is just, how much do you enjoy working with somebody? Are they easy to work with? Are they, you know, with a specific case that you want to focus on? Are they, you know, not haggling with you on price? Are they someone who is, you know, just a pleasure to actually interact with and, you know, the best you can when it comes to solving right. some of their legal situations. But, you know, those things, again, we can't tell you, we can't say that person, they were, they were a pleasure. They were a delight to work with. You, you guys, you know, yeah. we all know. I'm exactly. beating a dead horse. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so, and I want to, I want to make this clear, you know, it's not that, you know, and at least I'm speaking for us, it's not that we don't, it's not that we're trying to pass data tracking back onto you, but it's also a good way. And I know lo most lawyers like to be in control of things. This is a great way for you to maintain t a sense of control over the marketing is, or, or anything else you're outsourcing it is make sure that you're tracking what people are, are saying they're doing for you. So, you know, for us, Spotlight Branding, we're talking about um, helping you increase your referrals and attracting the right kinds of clients. So guess what? Those are the metrics that we think you should track. Track the number of referrals that you're getting on a monthly basis. Um, also, look at you know the kinds of cases that you're taking on. All right, so you want your content to focus on um, business formation. That's the content that we create for you. The, the bulk of the clients that you should start receiving should be with business formation cases. And, and that's, that's how you build that expert status. It's how you then, like Jana said, justify charging those premium rates because you're, you're, you've got that expert status. People want to work with the expert. And so people inherently expect experts are going to charge a premium price to work with. And that's not going to be a problem as opposed to people who are trying to find you on a search engine who, like Jana said, are just kicking tires. They're price shopping. They're, they're going to try to find the cheapest option just to get in and out. And they're not going to be great to work with. So um, to that point, uh, like I said, like Jana said, we have <laughs> help. Um, and we are also doing something really cool. If you have not heard yet, we uh, have just turned uh, 10 years old as a business this year. And we have been uh, pushing a, a really cool opportunity and a, and a really cool offer. Jana, you want to talk about it? Yes, I would love to. Um, so the $30,000 marketing makeover and even just kind of looking at some of the people who are, you know, here watching live. I know some of y'all have entries. So some of y'all are already entered in. You have a chance to win. Um, but what we'll do is fly out first class, of course, out to our headquarters um, in Charlotte, North Carolina, um, where you get to meet the team, have some one on one um, consulting with our CEO, Mark. Um, we'll do a video shoot here. We you get to strategize with your writers and your account manager, but also we 
We'll even write entire years worth of blogs for you. We'll get your podcast started. We'll set you up with all your social media profiles. Like we're going to really get everything rolling for 2022 and create a whole bunch of content for it. So, um, the way that you can get an entry is by scheduling and then like having a call with me. Hello. Um, f- to learn more about what we do. Um, so that earns you an entry. If you end up signing up before the year's over, you also get five more. So you can get up to six. Um, and even like existing clients. I think we have a couple on here as well. You guys um, sending us referrals gets you more entries. Um, if they sign up, you get more entries. So it's, um, you know, tons of different ways. And it's, um, I think, a pretty, pretty sweet deal. Yeah. And yeah. Um- you know, so like, and, and like a couple of examples, you know, that, you know, like, so let's say you sign up, become a client, and then, uh, you know, you are announced as the winner, you know, we'll still fly you out, you're still going to get a bunch of cool stuff, it's just going to be on top of the services that you're already receiving. So you're going to get double, uh, you know, essentially, you know, what you were getting, uh, you know, beforehand. And so, um, you know, a really, really cool opportunity, really cool way to just, you know, kickstart your a content marketing strategy. Um, and, and really help, you know, build that expert status. So yeah, go to, go to spotlightbranding.com slash makeover. Janice put it in the chat there um, to, to get entered. Uh, two weeks left-ish, more like 16 mm-hmm. days, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> yeah, the entry, the deadline to enter is 11.59 p.m. on New Year's Eve. So, um, mm-hmm. take, take registration or, you know, entries right up to that point. Just uh, book your call by then. Obviously, you don't have to have your call. Uh, by mm-hmm. the end of the year, but definitely book your call. Cause I know Janet, your calendar's pretty booked right now. Um, it is. We, it definitely um, opens up a little bit next week. Um, uh, so there should be some times and honestly, feel free to email me and I might be able to move some things around if you do want to talk, but we won't, it's not like we're doing the drawing January 1st. So like you said, if you need to book it for that first week of January or something, um, you know, we, we won't be doing the drawing for a bit and it should be a pretty, pretty fun drawing. I anticipate theatrics. Yeah. Oh yeah. We're going to make a big deal. I so, theatrics, yeah. But. We'll hang out here. Um, that's it for us. Um, we'll hang out here for another minute or so uh, in case any of you have any questions uh, about metrics or just marketing in general. Uh, happy to, happy to answer and, and help you guys out. So um, thank you all as always uh, for registering yes. for these. Uh, it's nice to, to feel appreciated <laughs> and oh. that, that people are interested in the things that we have to say. So yeah. Um, mm. <laughs> you know, hope they're hope they've been valuable this year. I hope they've been, you know, at least somewhat engaging and entertaining. I know webinars tend to have a tend to be, uh, uh, you know, pretty lame. But uh, yeah, Jennifer, thank you for thank you. for I can't for, wait to chat for, for doing a thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, I don't know. I think it's another one. I think Jay may have as well. Ooh. Y'all look at y'all Ooh. on top of it. Ooh. I love it. And look at how prompt we are. We, I yeah. like to think we have this about down to a science, that 30 yeah. minutes. Right. So we're not going over. We're not wasting your time. We're not doing anything. In fact, we've got to go because it's uh, office Christmas party. Time. Christmas party. Uh, Going to go downstairs. We have a, we're, we're conveniently located above a bar. So that makes it easy for us. And very uh, handy. Yeah. If you guys think of any questions that you have later on, feel free to reach out. Uh, you know, you can email myself or Jana. Uh, it's just our names at Spotlight Branding. Well, you know, not our names. At Spotlight Branding. You get it. You get it. You're not dumb. Um, but yeah, reach out to us. Uh, we're always happy to help in any capacity whatsoever. We are, uh, we are your personal contacts. I mean, you know, seriously, treat us like a consultant. That's what we're here for. Um, that's what we are here for at Spotlight Branding. You know, we have marketing services, but we're here to just help educate and, and help people out in any way we can. So always happy to do it. Uh, and that's going to be it for us. Thank you guys so much. Bye. Thank you. See y'all next year.